Hi, Terry. Uh, what did you think of the play of your bench tonight, particularly considering there was a sixth game of a long trip? Uh, I imagine getting that kind of production from the bench, particularly at the end of a road trip, is, is probably especially nice. Uh, I was, you know, Mello, Mello got it going in the first half. That was good to see. Uh, Ant bounced back from a tough game in Atlanta. That was good to see. Um, Annis obviously is very productive. Um, so, you know, I, I always kind of keep track of plus minus and those three in particular were very good both in first half and second half. So um, it was, we needed it, you know, uh, kind of got off to a slow start and they came in and helped. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Casey. Any other questions for Coach? Aaron Fentress with the Oregonian. Coach, you turned to Derek Jones tonight to start in place of Powell. Jones hadn't played much lately. Uh, what, why did you go with him rather than someone else who's been playing in the regular rotation? Just curious. Well, uh, actually, nobody's been playing. You, know, We've been playing an eight-man rotation. So uh, basically, I had to choose between Derek and Nas and uh, went with Derek. He's been a starter throughout the year until we got Norman. So uh, to me, it was, uh, it was kind of an easy decision. Well, I guess what I'm asking is why not start Simons at the guard position since Powell's a guard and since Jones uh, Well, mainly because uh, of the rotation coming off the bench. I mean, I, I do like our three guard lineup and starting Ant would, uh, there's no question that that lineup would have played well. But when you look at the rotation, who you got coming off the bench and having a ball handler uh, and some shooting off the bench, I just thought it made more sense to uh, keep Ant coming off the bench. Okay, thanks. Jamie Hudson, NBC Sports Northwest. Coach, you guys go five and one on this trip. Um, just describe overall how, how you felt this trip went. <laughs> well, an understatement, <laughs> understatement, it was a great road trip. Uh, you know, going into it, six games on the road. You know, if you can go 500 on the road, it's usually a, a decent trip. Uh, four and two would have been even better. But, uh, you know, five and one at this stage of the season, where we are in the standings, uh, I couldn't have asked for anything more. Dwight Jeans, NBC Sports Northwest. Yeah, Terry, you can look ahead now. You got this game out of the way. And, uh, you got the Lakers at home on Friday, fans for the first time. And the tiebreaker is up for grabs in that game, too. Uh, can you talk about how big that game is for you guys and whether there's a possibility of overstating that? Or how do you approach a game like that? No, I, uh, I think it's a big game. Everybody recognizes the, all the things that you mentioned. Uh, it's especially with the play-in uh, format. You know, maybe it would be different if it weren't with the playoff format. But – um, you know, or the, I should say the play in format, but it's a big game. Uh, the tiebreaker, the Lakers, uh, you know, we're in the mix for six, seven, eight. Uh, it's, there, there is a lot at stake. We win this game. Uh, you know, the, the ball's in our court and, and they know that if they win it, the ball's in their court. So, uh, I love the fact that, that we're going to have fans in the arena. Uh, that's, uh, that was great news. And I think it's all, it's appropriate almost that, that our first game with fans is going to be against the Lakers. I can't think of anything better. Can 1900 fans make a difference, Terry? And how? Yes, they can make, they certainly make a difference. I mean, we've been on the road now and in multiple arenas that have fans and you do notice the fans. Now it's not, it's not 19,000, but to me, you know, if you're in a gym with 500 people, you feel the 500 people. Uh, so I think our players, no question, will notice uh, a difference in the, in Motor Center with 1,900 people. Chris Asalta, Sport DNA. Coach, what kind of confidence booster for your team was where the last six games, especially the five wins in the road on the road end? Uh, how, what you would you like to maintain? Well. If memory serves me, it's been a while, but I think we went into this road trip, road trip on a five-game losing streak. So obviously, uh, uh, this was a, a big turnaround for us. Uh, what I'd like to keep going is is um, just our level of play. We've beaten some good teams uh, on the road, and I, I and we're playing some good teams coming up. So it's going to be a 
a challenge to maintain that level. But I think that, you know, we see the, we see the finish line, you know, we've got six games left and we know what's at stake. And I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. I think it's going to be a, a, a pretty interesting finish to the season. And I think we're going to be up to the challenge. Jason quick with the athletic. Coach on a personal level, how has this season been for you and how has this last week uh, maybe changed your outlook on things? Um, I, I don't understand what you mean. Uh, can, I don't understand the question. Uh, on a personal level, it's been a up and down season. You're breaking up. Yeah, Jason, your mic's breaking up. Yeah, I got bad internet in my house. Yeah, that's just, just what I was asking. Like how, how it has been for you on a personal level, you know, the ups and downs of this season, handling it. You know, honestly, every, every NBA season has ups and downs. Uh, I can't remember an NBA season that it was just like smooth sailing all the time. Um, you know, I, I use the example many times of when I was in Seattle as an assistant, we won 63 games. And then the next year we won 57 and it felt like it was, it was a tough season winning 57 games. The next year we win 64 games and then we go and win 57 games. And that 57 win season was a very difficult season. So my point is that you're never going to have a, a season that isn't up and down. I look at this season so far, CJ missing 25 games, Nurk missing 35 games, uh, riding the tides of the highs and lows. Uh, you know, that's just, that's just part of the NBA. Uh, every team goes through it. And this year was no different. 